the one last thing we want to do, Pastor Noel, is have a conversation with you um, about Covenant Light and just briefly get to um, hear about the church and the system and strategy that you use um, to do multiplication. So, Pastor, Pastor Noel, tell us a little bit about Covenant Light uh, before I tell you about what I want to ask about the small groups um, so that we, we hear um, the genesis of this mission, who is Covenant Light, um, and uh, what, what the dream or the vision is for Covenant Light. Okay, so um, I used to pastor a church uh, under a very strong visionary leader who is still my pastor. Um, and then he traveled out and um, handed over the church in Nigeria to me um, and a team of other people. So we, we the church grew. We uh, uh, had quite a sizable number of people. I think we grew to about 3,000 people and um, wow yeah so at, but there was a challenge and i mentioned this is that the church of acts where three thousand were added to their number <laughs> 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 well that's that was that was it so we when i took over we were about 150 and um the the thing the difference was that in that 150 maybe like 120 to 130 we're actively being discipled. When we're 3,000, maybe like 500, we're actively being discipled. Mm -hmm. So we had a 2,500, you know, that you would see in church and you're like, man, I hope they don't know that this person is in my church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, one particular day, you know, let me know. I mean, some things you see are like... <laughs> You know, Guess you want to hear, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, don't hold back. So, you know, you know all those things where maybe the fad that is, there was a time when the fad was pulling down trousers to where it's sagging, you know, and so I came out one day and I saw several of my members sagging and showing their boots. The like, crack. Man, it's called the crack. Yes, and yeah. this person has been in church for for at least two years or three years. And I'm like, if you're still being influenced like this. I, so bottom line, I couldn't say this person was here and then got here. But the people that were in the immediate, my immediate circle were being discipled. But we, you know, so I, I had this, um, I was not enjoying it. Mm -hmm. So I had this desire to have something that can disciple people. So, Eventually, praying one day, God told me it's time to go start out um, Covenant Light and still connected under this ministry. So, but we, we started out with a strong focus on discipling people um, and not too focused on numbers. Um, even though we still believe in numbers and we feel true discipleship will lead to numbers. Um, So that's, that's, what, that's how it, that was the idea that we left with, um, to be focused on discipling people. Uh, and we started. So we had to start looking for systems that could help disciple. Mm. And what we settled on is what, you know, what we call the missional communities. Mm -hmm. um, larger groups of people big enough for you to uh, uh, not feel like you are focused on, but small enough as well to know you, and not exactly the tiny small group and not a church. That was what really began to... I don't know whether it's, it's, it's in uh, Exponential or which book it is that talks about uh, big enough to make a difference, but small enough to care. Yes, exactly, exactly. You know, um, so that, 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 and then having hurdles under that is currently, we, we, and we've gone through so many things to arrive where we are now. Um, but where we are now is having hurdles, which we call prayer house, and then several hurdles make up a missional community, which we sometimes also call lighthouse. But we allow nomenclatures to change mm -hmm. based on location. 
So in Nairobi, for instance, we call it missional communities because um, for some reason that, that seems to be more known. Mm -hmm. um, in Nigeria, we have small group and like se several small groups forming a zone or a sector or something. So, but here the missional community took, um, so nomenclatures we allow it to be shaped it by the by, by location, by location. not not per church, you know. But Nigeria has similar well, nomenclature. Nations, nations, within a yeah. nation. Okay. Based on the culture of that place, mm -hmm. Nigeria has a similar nomenclature from here. But they know it's missional community, mm -hmm. but it's also called lighthouse. Mm -hmm. So a lighthouse leader is a missional community leader. Um, okay. So um, I remember listening to you speak. Uh, around that time, maybe just to give you context about, about life spring, um, is that uh, we sense that there needed to be a shift in, in, that, in that same way. We, we have been around for more than 20 years and there was a culture that we had. Um, we were known as a community church. We had uh, what we, initially we called them home groups, then uh, changed and started calling them life groups. Um, but they're mostly fellowship groups very strong and impactful in, in, their, in their own respect. But we sense that God was leading us to have a shift um, in, in, in how we're doing that. Uh, still maintain the community element uh, because it's a, it's a strong thing. If, if you meet anyone who has been at LifeSpring, they will tell you that the one thing they haven't been able to find anywhere else they have gone is the type of community that they found here. So we knew that that was a grace that God had given this community here. Um, but I started researching and um, uh, beginning to follow those who are probably doing something that looks like what we were looking for. So I had uh, studied um, the summer communities in uh, Seattle, USA, small groups, discipleship groups, um, home churches, house churches. This was way, way before COVID um, had, had happened. Um, I came across the underground movement and um, um, similar concept um, of micro churches and impacting in different places. But they felt so far uh, for us, culturally, but also geographically. Then I came across um, Worship Harvest and what they were doing, and I started getting interested in, in some of what they are doing. Then one time, I think it was, you were at Worship Harvest, where you were speaking yes. and you shared about your system mm. and I felt I want to sit and study that system and understand it more you know and you're talking about some uh, rhythms and iterations yes. that you are using to to multiply yes. could you please share a little bit about that so that they also okay, hear so we there was this um, at some point we had this uh... okay I should. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. So at some point, um, the the uh, the system you were talking about, we call it, it's the one four twelve forty one twenty. So you start with one person, the person of peace, which we know understand that to be now. Um, so that one person of peace, usually, if you get a a, it's the way we, if you're just one individual, you can start a church. If you're in a location where there is no church, you can start a church. And the first thing to do is to get that person of peace. And the person of peace now um, usually has a network of people. So if you get an Andrew like Jesus did, an Andrew will get you a Peter, who is his brother, and a James and a John, who, is, who are his friends. And so you will have your Andrew, Peter, James, and John. So from one, it becomes four. And getting the network of those Peter, James, and John, um, getting their own threes. So there's this common phrase, get your three, get your three. Get your Peter, James, and John. If you're Andrew, you know, get your Peter, James, and John. So getting the Peter, James, and John of, of Peter, James, and John takes it to 12. And then uh, Peter, James, and John, Peter, James, and John. Just continuing that, it goes to 40. If you do the mm -hmm, math, mm -hmm. and then um, 120. At 120, we consider it 
a full-fledged church. Um, the 40 we Was that maybe the church at Pentecost? Uh, yes, yeah. they, were, they were 120, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. And then um, the 40 we consider a missional community. Mm -hmm. uh, the 12 we consider a, a prayer house. So mm -hmm. We have prayer house, lighthouse, and church. Now, um, when I came to Nairobi, so Nairobi was the first place we actually, our churches in Nigeria had already begun, and now, like you were talking about, transiting mm -hmm. into this. Nairobi was the first place that we actually now um, began. I came alone, and I didn't have anyone here. So the first thing was to get my, my three. You know, so we did a training, um, and I just wanted to get three or four people who wanted to plant a church with me. So we did a training, and, but I ended up with about 12 people you know, who were willing mm -hmm. to start a church. So I, I went straight from one to 12. So we had a 12th level meeting in my sitting room, um, just f bonding, forming community, talking about mission and getting excited about it. Um, that group grew to about, got to the 40 level, still meeting in my sitting room. And it was from there we now launched out as a church um, that is now meeting. So we are, we are a full-fledged church now, mm -hmm. and we're now considering planting another one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. Yes, that's worth celebrating what God is able to do when there's a system, there's a seed, and it's nurtured. Um, it sounds like this is having certain rhythms. Uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the rhythms that you're having, maybe with those 12, when you talk about training. Um, yeah. Yes, our, our, our rhythms have, have, are constantly adjusting. They are, so it's um, currently, currently, the huddles, so we, we did different things. The missional communities, because initially it was just one missional community. When we were 30 to 40 meeting in my sitting room. Uh, but when we now launched ours as a church, we had to break that up. So now they've grown into uh, full missional communities themselves. Um, and so our rhythms have to be changing because they still have to meet with me, and then they have to meet with their own people. So currently the missional communities meet during the week. Um, the church as a whole meets on Sunday. And then the huddles meet um, after service on Sunday. So other steps on Sunday, the huddles meet, and then they plan for the missional community meeting, which happens during the week, based on the different, some of them meet on a Thursday, some of them meet on a Saturday, um, and they, they have that. The huddles are our discipling tool. Missional communities are more evangelistic, and they're out there to reach more people. Mm -hmm. But those who have been reached um, get, this, uh, have been discipled through the huddles. Mm -hmm. So the huddles, we usually, the typical huddle asks two questions. What's, what's God saying to you? And what do you want to do about it? So we actually hold people um, accountable to do certain things. Mm -hmm. The challenge I have, what I realized was the challenge back then about discipling was that our discipleship systems were informative. Mm -hmm. It was like tell them something, mm -hmm. teach them something. But it's between information and transformation. And between information and transformation is, is practice. Um, when a seed is sown into the ground, the word of God is a seed. Mm. When it's sown into the ground, the difference between a rock and a soil is that the soil, if you pull up, bring out that seed, you will see the hole that the soil made mm. to receive the seed. Yes. So the soil adjusts mm. to receive the word. Mm. A rock never adjusts, so nothing grows. Um, so we ask, what adjustments are you making based on what you just heard? What are you, what are you changing? And so the person will say, well, I'm going to be adjusting or changing this. I'm going to be praying more. I'm going to be um, something measurable and specific. Mm. And then we follow up with that. that. That very powerfully transformed our ability to disciple people. Um, one of the people that came with me, she had to leave. Okay, that's her over there. Uh, she's not even paying attention to that's me. That's Stephanie. So, oh, okay. okay, so she just waved. Um, so she was in Siokimau. Mm -hmm. and she came alone um, when we first started. She was part of the initial 12. Mm -hmm. And now she leads a missional community of her own. All together from that Yokimao Buruburi area, probably close to about 30 or so people. 30 people. Now. Yes. Wow. Wow. So, 
Awesome. Um, <laughs> so, and, and so I found out that the strongest um, of all the things we've tried, those two questions, what is occurring to you? And what are you going to do about it? Mm-hmm. And the next week we meet again, What's occur- what, what, what did you say you did were going you do? to do? Yes. Have, how far have you gone? Mm-hmm. If, there, if you couldn't do it, no problem. Um, what, why? We figured that out together. And then what's occurring to you again based on what you've been hearing? And that two things began to happen. It became easier for anybody to lead the huddle um, because it's not me teaching you. It's simply me getting you to take information mm. and experience transformation uh, by putting it, by adjusting your life towards it. So that's what our holders do. But I think we're calling it simple and repeatable, isn't it? Yes. You know, anybody yes. can do it. By the way, I yeah. didn't acknowledge the <laughs> impact of new thing in, in yeah. covenant light. You know, um, wow. a lot of this shift and transformation happened um, after that, um, after new thing, the new thing training we hosted in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where the journey began. So, but we had, we did several things, but of all of them, and I, I need to say this, what works for one person oftentimes needs to be adjusted to work for another, mm-hmm. depending on your location and stuff. But for us, what I, I have seen move us the fastest, where multiplication and discipline is concerned, mm-hmm. is this huddles, missional community, and um, church. The 1240, 120, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Um, any questions on, from the floor? It's simple enough. It's understandable, isn't it? Yeah. We'll put a pause, but I still haven't seen the food. So we can, <laughs> um, I don't know. It's, it's coming. And then there are people I, 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 I cannot see. Yes, yes, Pastor, you can ask. Wow. Awesome. <laughs> yes. We have been looking for each other. Yeah. Uh, for the last. I asked him, I, at one time I was where he lives and he had run away. <laughs> but yes, this is a God appointed time. All right. Should I go ahead? Yeah, yeah, please do. Yeah. All right. Um, so let me, maybe I should use Covenant Light when we decided, after the first meeting with New Thing, and we decided, uh, we identified what was the challenge. Every living thing would grow. And if growth is not happening like we want it to, then there is something that needs to be adjusted. So we started, we realized that we didn't have a culture of mission. That was the first thing. We didn't have a, if you, if you a, a, a culture of, uh, a missional culture and multiplication culture 
if you came to my church and you said, by this time tomorrow, God is going to increase you financially, you hear, amen. <laughs> if you said, by this time tomorrow, we're going to be 20 churches, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't have a culture of mission and multiplication. So now, this, um, like I said, I'm just going to be sharing what we did, but oftentimes these things have to be adjusted. So two things or three things. One was um, we began to set aside finances for multiplication and planting, church planting. Um, we d- began to teach for one year. You know, normally in Nigeria, every year is a year of something. I don't know, do you guys do that here? Uh-huh. Yeah. So a year of restoration, a year of multiple breakthrough. A year of everything good. You know, (laughs) hopefully yours is not like the Chinese. eh? (laughs) The year of the dog, the year of the pig. You know, something useful. Yes. Like restoration. Yes. Every church has to. Or your people will go to the one that has the best (laughs) year for that year. So, yes, the year of manifestation. So, but that year, we called it the year of, um, can you remember? it's about a, a year of mission or something like that. It's something about mission. So it wasn't the typical Nigerian year of that people like. This year, we're going to, to adjust ourselves and become a church on mission. And we called it, I can't remember the name, a year of, a year of, uh, of mission or something like that, you know. And when I announced it, people were like, Oh, you know, it wasn't like, yeah. Did some leave? Well, yeah, yeah, so like they were waiting for, after that one, the real one. So, but all through that year, every, every Sunday, every, like we just dedicated that year to teaching about mission, person of peace, um, bless, uh, uh, begin with prayer, uh, 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 listen, eat, share. Uh, uh, um, serve, then share. So we're just teaching, we would, and we started looking for, and revelations, believers respond to the Bible. Mm. Believers are believers because they believe the word. So you have to teach it from the word. It can't just be an instruction. So we, I saw scriptures like when Jesus, like everywhere I, I looked that year in the Bible, I was just seeing mission. Even in miracles, like when Jesus mm. um, uh, uh, was passing by and a man born, that was blind said Jesus son of David have mercy on me and Jesus you know I saw bless in that <laughs> passage of scripture so Jesus began with prayer right and then Bible says, and when Jesus heard so somebody was listening mm-hmm. right so the whole process of leading to that person becoming a follower of Jesus so I began to see so we, we did a lot of teaching that year on mission um, and by the end of it, things changed. If you say we have released, a, the way of celebration here, when we say we have released a new church or a new community, it became like that. So that was, the, the culture had to be adjusted. That may not be a big problem for, for a 20-member church because you are, you are starting off. So you will not feel like, you don't have like a negative cultural wind that you have to come against because you're just starting out. So but it would be a good thing to make it part of the culture, make it part of the way people, you know. Church is the only place you go to and people are members. <laughs> you know, if you go to school, and say, who is a member in this school? You are, you are in school either as a teacher or a student. You came to do something, you know. So a, 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 a people with a purpose ought to have, the membership should have a purpose. I don't know if I'm making sense. You know, so um, we try to create that sense that you are not here as a consumer. Um, tell us how you feel about service. Did we dress well? Did we cook well? Is the food okay? Was the choir looking nice? That was us before. So there, were, there was this set of consumers that I had a team of people who served them every Sunday and they told us how well we did. We try to shift that and let everybody know you are here. Yes, and they, and they give based on how well you serve. They pay for the, the service, <laughs> you, know? you know. So we try to change that. 
that year, that all that changed. The second thing was prayer. Um, one minister of the gospel said, why is it that amusement parks are able to attract people um, without prayer and churches can't? And I answered and I said, well, there are demons fighting churches, none fighting amusement park. And that's the truth. Um, there is an enemy who has said, who knows that your growth as a church empties hell. So he will resist you. So there has to be prayer. Um, and it, it, quite a, a lot of that going on. When we first came here, we used to have a Kesha every Friday. And we had it for like four months to launch out as a church. And it bonded us. We will come still overnight at my place. We will eat, but we will pray extensively for the land. Um, and different prophecies and different things, you know, which I know most of you here know about spiritual things you need to deal with. The, all that was happening during that period. We we'll pray, pray at least two to three hours in the spirit every, every time we gather. So, so there was the funding, there was the teaching to change culture, and that's, all of that is like background. Then there now has to be a strategy. And simple questions. Uh, don't over, you know, simple questions like, how do we get the guy on the streets to come in here? Ask that simple question. How do we get that guy on the streets to come in here? And stay in prayer until that question is answered. If God can give Noah specifications for building an ark, who was not a carpenter, and he built an ark that survived what Titanic could not survive, God can give specifics. You know, how do we get that guy out there to come in? And God will tell you how, how for that community. How do we get the guy who has come in to become committed and discipled? How do we get the discipled people to disciple others? Those questions, when asked prayerfully, you will have answers. Write them down, discuss them with other friends like Pastor uh, Bishop Manch and other people. Some of the, the half of what you write down is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I can just give you that for free, okay? Half of that, those things you wrote down, you find out that you have chosen a rectangular wheel. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like the best option until you talk to someone who has done it and say, no, this one, this one. After two years, you'll come back and revisit this issue. So remove it. So, but it, it will give you a framework. And then you take it, discuss with different people. In the multitude of counsel, there is safety, the Bible says. So at, by the time you're done, you come up with a, a, a system that works for you. It will have certain common elements. There will have to be a huddle like a smaller group. There will have to be, as you grow, an empowerment of people to, to lead like you are leading. Once you multiply leadership, you multiply followers. All right, so have people leading like you're leading, and then, you know, so there has to be that. Some common things that cannot be traded. You have to multiply leadership. You have to be willing to share. Le at 20, at 30, even up to 100, every testimony is about how you bless them. You have to be willing to share that position. People have to come up and, and share testimonies that didn't measure you. <laughs> that has nothing to do with you because other leaders have been raised and they're impacting people. One of the things I love about um, Worship Harvest, um, when, I go, when I travel to Uganda and I'm talking to the leaders there, they don't all reference the bishop there. They're always talking about my disciple. My, you know, this is my disciple, this is my disciple. So the leadership has been multiplied. So whatever system you come up with, those basic things will be there. There will be groups where people can come in that is large enough that they can disappear in and not have focus on them. Um, the challenge we had when we first started, we had only the huddles. And we went from huddles straight to church. We, the challenge we had was that when people were invited to the huddles and there were three, four people in a meeting, I mean, if you are new, you will feel the impact of that. Everybody is talking to you. Everybody, when they say, please share something, they are looking at you, what do you have to share? You know, um, but when we, when we got to that 2030, the people we were inviting were comfortable in those meetings. In fact, one, one lady who is now, um, who works in my office now, 
said to me, I don't want to come because I don't have anything. They will say, share something, share something. I don't, have anything. I don't even know anything. I said, nobody will even notice you. Even though we were about 25 or so at that time. So she came and she sat in my sitting room at the back. After the meeting, the next day I asked her, I said, how did it go? She said, interestingly, I just had people come hug me, embrace me. I felt a lot of warmth, but no pressure, no eyes on me. And she stayed. That lady now has led to several people coming to Christ. But the first time she went on evangelism, she called her mom. Say, mom, I got somebody saved today. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know? And she said, I've never in my life told people about Jesus. Now she's actively on mission, but she didn't want to be seen when she first came. But a larger group, like a missional community, allowed that, which a smaller group could not do. So you will need to have those layers of groups. But the larger group also needs to be made up of the smaller groups, or else it will become the smaller group. It will reduce to the smaller group. So those are basic things I think I could, I could um, share with you, yeah. And, and, and allow, allow me to say that uh, these are some of the conversations we'll be having at the new thing training um, next week and for most of next year we will be you know sharing yes we'll be learning and putting into practice together with others okay so um, please Every, everything yeah. I shared right now sorry yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's copy 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 I just <laughs> so the new thing training is amazing it's amazing it's amazing, yeah. So I can say that. All right. I can see the meal is here. And there are many questions I know we want to ask. But because uh, Pastor Noel has opened himself up to relationship uh, with us. Okay. So it was called our year of kingdom focus. Yeah. So. Yeah. It, it, it had to be, you know, something that can be <laughs> received uh, in the culture. Okay. Which is why we talk about incarnation, or it has to be immersed in that culture, mm -hmm. something that speaks to that culture. But I was, I was, I was going to say, um, I, I believe that this is not the first and last time, Pastor, that you will be available to this community. Yeah, I, we, we are not going to make it happen, let it happen uh, by God's grace, but with your permission. Amen. Okay, uh, you, we would like to welcome you again to hear more. Some of the things you hear um, Pastor talk about. You probably want to go and practice, then more questions arise. Please allow us to come back to you with more questions as, as time goes by. Uh, but for now, I will put a pause here. Pastor Noel, thank you so much.